Hello, my name is George Chalmers and today I'm here at SRUC Vet Centre at, uh, near Crabston. I'm going to be talking to Perne Jorgensen, a veterinary investigative officer, and today we're going to be talking about purrs and pigs, uh, looking at the effects and also what farmers can do about it if they find they, they get it or how they can try and keep it out. Purrs is the most economically damaging disease to big herds in Scotland. It causes stillbirths and abortions in the breeding herd and also can lead to respiratory diseases in the growing herd. The control and eradication of PERS is vitally important for the Scottish pig industry. Uh, it will improve the health of the pigs, obviously, but also the efficiency and the economics of the sector. Not only will these, these areas benefit, but a major consideration is that as the efficiency improves, the carbon footprint of the Scottish pig sector will also improve. For more information, please refer to the FAS website at faz.scot. PERS, also uh, known as PRRS, uh, stands for porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome, uh, and it's a viral disease in pigs worldwide. Uh, it's also been known as blue ear disease, uh, which sort of classifies the, the blue ears that some pig might develop when they get uh, infected. Um, the disease has been uh, present in uh, the UK since uh, 1991 and in Scotland in 1992. Uh, and it's now endemic uh, in the country. Uh, there are two types of virus, uh, two genotypes of PERS. There's the type 1, PERS type 1, which is the uh, European genotype, and then there's the American one, which is type 2. Um, we only have PERS type 1, the European genotype in the country at the moment. Well, PERS is one of the most important uh, diseases in Scotland, uh, and it's mostly present in the farms in the northeast of Scotland, just because there's the, the most uh, commercial farms in this area. Um, a survey from the abattoir, it's a historic survey from the abattoir in 19, showed that about 44% of finishing farms uh, had pigs with antibody in them. PERS can affect pigs differently depending on their age and their immune system uh, and depending on whether it's a breeding herd and a finishing herd. As the name implies, um, it's called porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome in pigs. So the main effects we see from a PERS infection is uh, reproductive issues in sows, uh, which includes abortions, stillbirths, uh, born of weak piglets, uh, increase in pre-weaned mortality uh, and return to estrus. Uh, and the respiratory part is uh, often pneumonia, interstitial pneumonia in growing pigs. In chronically affected herds, uh, you might see asymptomatic pigs, which means they don't look particularly sick from PERS, but they harbor the virus in their body, which means they can affect other pigs and they can also become sick with uh, other diseases um, because they become immunosuppressed by the virus. So they're quite prone to bacterial diseases uh, on top. Uh, in more acutely affected herds, if uh, the PERS virus has ever been present before, uh, they don't have an immune uh, response to the virus and they will um, often go down with severe disease on the unit. Uh, and that's sort of acute deaths uh, due to, um, to fever. They have viremia, virus in the blood. They can get respiratory distress, uh, diarrhea, weight loss, uh, and just, yeah, death in, in all groups. Um, so this might be a bit scary if that happens. It could resemble uh, ASF coming into a herd. Um, so it's important to, to do some further diagnostics to, to rule that out. PERS only affects pigs, uh, domestic and feral, so wild boars can be infected too. Uh, and it cannot be transmitted to humans, uh, not from live pigs or from meat products. Uh, because it's mainly uh, pigs who harbor the, uh, the virus, the, the main uh, way of getting introduction of the virus into a unit is by bringing in pigs. And uh, that often in a breeding unit, that would, all, that would in involve uh, getting gilts in uh, or even boars. Um, as replacements. Uh, so it's important to make sure that they are in quarantine and that you source them from purse free uh, units. Um, the virus can be find, found in all secretions, uh, semen, saliva, blood, uh, so it's important also to make sure that you, um, when you bring in boars that they are free from purse and are quarantined 
and if using AI as your main method of service to make sure that they are uh, certified free of PERS. The virus does not uh, survive well outside the pig host. However, there are other ways of transmitting uh, PERS within a, within a farm or between farms than uh, by pig-to-pig -pig contact. Um, it can be transmitted by flies, uh, slurry, infected slurry, uh, and even airborne. Um, and that's why uh, an important risk factor for PERS is uh, proximity to other pig herds, just because it can spread by the wind. Um, it can also be briefly be alive on uh, infected clothes and vehicles, hence uh, cleaning and disinfecting is important. Once PERS is in a unit, it spreads really quickly by nose-to-nose -nose contact between pigs. Uh, it can also be transmitted from the sow to her piglets uh, and over the placenta when she's pregnant. Uh, and as discussed before, it also uh, can be transmitted through the semen, uh, so if there's uh, insemination or service by an infected boar, uh, that can also cause infection. It's quite easy to diagnose PERS on a unit if it's suspected uh, by the clinical signs. Uh, we have m many ways of um, diagnosing it, uh, mainly because the virus is present in all of secretions in the pigs, which includes semen, blood uh, and saliva. Uh, so um, it doesn't even need a vet sometimes to take the actual samples because we can have chew ropes where we just place a rope uh, within a, um, a pen and the, the pigs can chew on it. And then we can do a PCR uh, at the lab, which will detect virus. Um, other uh, ways of diagnosing PERS would be to submit uh, dead animals for post-mortem examination. Uh, that's especially a good idea if it's uh, an acute death and we don't suspect PERS, uh, mainly because we can't detect, the, for instance, the interstitial pneumonia we see in, in growers. Uh, unless we get um, a carcass and we can get the lungs for PCR testing and uh, histopathology. We can also examine aborted fetuses for the presence of PERS virus. When PERS has been diagnosed in a farm, uh, it's important to talk to your vet about any strategies to control the disease on the unit. Uh, each farm is different and have different needs and management systems, so it's important to um, refer with your vet and get a plan in action. Once a herd is uh, diagnosed as infected, uh, producers can go many ways to try and control the infection. Um, overall, the immune response of each uh, of the herd uh, and the individual pig uh, is important for how the disease will uh, develop. Once a herd is diagnosed with PERS, uh, many choose to vaccinate uh, as a way of controlling the disease within the herd. Uh, the vaccination serves two purposes. One is to reduce the clinical signs uh, and the severity of the disease in the individual pigs so they don't die and get sick. And the second part is to ensure that they secrete as little virus as possible so they don't affect other pigs uh, in the pens. In breeding herds, it's uh, often protocol to vaccinate the sows um, by which ways we protect the, the piglets through the colostrum. Um, so they receive antibodies to the PERS uh, when the sow is vaccinated, uh, which protects them until they're about six to eight weeks. At this time though, they, um, the, immune, the passive immune system that they've sort of gained from the sow will wean, and then sometimes it's uh, recommended to also treat, uh, or sorry, to vaccinate the, the piglets themselves. Uh, of course, for this, uh, for this uh, method to work, it's important to ensure that the piglets always receive enough colostrum. The persistence of PERS infection within the farm uh, is reliable on two things. It's the, uh, the presence of pigs who carry virus, who are chronically infected, and the bringing in of new naive pigs to the unit. Uh, so, like we've discussed before, that includes bringing in replacement gilts um, and uh, having pigs, piglets born from sows who have never been exposed to virus uh, and thereby mixing them with uh, older pigs who might carry the virus. Improvement of the farm's biosecurity is also important um, to ensure that PERS doesn't spread within a unit and out with the unit to neighbours and other farms. Um, keeping uh, equipment and pens or just pig accommodation clean uh, and disinfecting it in between batches is important to reduce the virus load. 
uh, and also make sure that uh, vehicles for transport and clothing in between different groups um, are kept clean uh, so we don't spread it around. Um, fly control and avoid overstocking uh, and good ventilation also helps uh, reduce the, the pressure from, from the spread of the virus. Um, some people might consider uh, with their vet to do a partial or full depopulation uh, on the unit, um, but this is a, a big decision uh, with many um, factors involved, so that's best discussed uh, in detail with your vet. The Scottish uh, pig industry is very interested in not just controlling purse as a disease, uh, but to try and eradicate the disease uh, on a national level. Um, they've tried that by uh, starting a pilot project in, which involved um, pig units in Murray Coast area, uh, where they tried to map out which farms had purse uh, and to try and control it. Um, and the project worked really well uh, and showed that a collaboration between the individual producers and the pig industry and vets and stakeholders um, is a good way to try and eliminate purse on a national level.